can you build a website like Airbnb without needing to be an engineer? It turns out it's really not that difficult because if you think about it, a marketplace application like Airbnb doesn't have the most advanced functionality in the world. You have buyers and sellers, and that creates a marketplace. And what makes a startup like Airbnb so great is actually the community around the marketplace. Think about how Airbnb has great photos and stories and people really love their mission. And so in this course, we're going to talk a little bit about how we can actually replicate those features and functionalities to get you an MVP of a marketplace app like Airbnb and then what to do with it. So to start, my name is Brent Summers. This is the Code Free Startup. And let's dive into a little bit more about the actual functionality in a product like Airbnb. To get a marketplace application off the ground without writing a single line of code, we're going to turn to three tools to help us accomplish this. The first is a tool called Bubble, which is a visual programming language, and that's going to handle a lot of the design and display. Now we're going to use two other tools that get into things called workflows and databases, but before we do that, let's just review quickly how web applications work. So right here is a nice little image. Let me just bump it up so you can actually see. Um, and this is called the Model View Controller Framework. And it's how most websites and web applications on the web work. How do they work? So you start out with something called the view. And the view is really what every, everyone sees when you actually go to a web page. So when you're interacting with Airbnb, when you're scrolling, when you're clicking, you're really just going through the view. Now, what happens when I hit this request to book button? That's where the other pieces of a web application come in. So the model is where the data is stored and all of those actions inside of the database. That's gonna be handled by the controller. But for now, let's just think about what a potential model could be for Airbnb. And you can think about that in just a more basic sense. What things do the people at Airbnb need to keep track of? They need to keep track of users. They need to keep track of the rooms and homes that those users are sharing. And they also need to keep track of things like billing, bookings. So there's really just quite a lot of data that they need to really handle. And then what's the controller? The controller is, you can think of the glue in between the view and the model. So this, app, this uh, actually really describes it pretty nicely. When I do something in the application, so let's say I request a book, it is actually sending a message to the database and that message probably looks a lot like this. Uh, is this person logged in? If so, send to booking page. If not, send to sign up page. And that's an example of what a controller looks like. It's started with a user action, and then the controller will talk to the database and say, hey, the user's trying to do this. And the database is then going to notify the controller, oh, well, you know, it looks like this person's not signed in yet. We need to actually create an account. Then it will update the user by bringing them to the sign-in page. They'll sign in, which is another action, which now creates them an account in the database, and so on and so forth. So this is really the basic model for any web application. Now let's actually get into a few of the tools we will use to make a successful model view controller model without using any code. So the first after Bubble, which is gonna handle most of our views and some of our workflows as well, but majority of our workflows are going to be handled through Zapier. Uh, and Zapier is a great tool that allows you to put a lot of powerful workflows and tools you use every day, like Gmail, Twitter, Slack, etc. And one of the cool things about Zapier is that it will allow us to do things that include messaging users, handling billing. Um, so it's quite a powerful tool when you get into it. And they recently released something called multi-step zaps, which allow you to do much more than just one thing at a time. So this is going to kind of bolster some of the workflow capability. And Blockspring is the third tool that we're gonna use. And this is going to be really just on the data side of things. So Blockspring, you can think of as a database powerhouse. It allows you to grab data from sites like Amazon if you want to search for all of Amazon's products in your application. It allows you to run searches inside of some of Google's uh, APIs. And it allows you to really just get access to data without needing to write a complicated code base that 
uh, queries, runs, and gets uh, things from an API. So all terms that we'll explore later on, but BlockSpring makes it really, really easy. So these are the three tools that we're gonna use. And when we dive into it, we're going to start out by going over really how we're going to build this app and how it's gonna be really, really fast compared to uh, the traditional method of getting an app out the door, which is coding um, and then getting feedback later. We're gonna try to aim for feedback really early on. So this is the introduction and hope to see you for lesson one where we will start diving into exactly how to get this Airbnb marketplace built.